so excited to have Jem Simon and Mahima from Avanade here today. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, before we dive into the details of your presentation, could you each introduce yourselves? Thanks, Lauren. My name is Jem Urfoliolu. I lead the Intelligent Enterprise team for Avanade's IT organization. And I'm Simon Windell, and I lead our data engineering and data science group within the intelligent engineering practice. Hi, Lauren. I'm Mahima Bedi. I'm the service architect and Power BI platform owner at Avanade. Perfect. Thank you all so much for being here today. I'm excited to get started and share a little bit more about your company's journey. So let's go ahead and start with um, Jem. If you could tell us a little bit more about Avanade and what we'll be discussing today. Avanade is a global consulting company focused on digital transformation. We have approximately 38,000 professionals across the globe. 46% of global 500 companies are our clients. And since we are a services company, clients are at the heart of everything we do. And we know the experience that our clients have with Avanade is driven by the interactions they have with our employees. What we will be discussing today is related to that definition. It's around how Avanade is harnessing the power of analytics to drive better employee and client experiences. As the intelligent enterprise team, you're leveraging Power BI to enable a data-driven business transformation and seeing real benefits delivered across these areas. Our mission has been to embed data, analytics, and AI into core processes to enhance business operations, accelerate and increase the precision of business decisions. This is actually a journey we started last year under a company-wide program that formalized client and employee experience as key strategic growth initiatives for our company. The result was the creation of a unified BI solution, what we call Experience Insights. Uh, the solution is integrating data across multiple channels and generating highly actionable insights to track, measure, and understand key factors like employee engagement, retention modeling, how the clients are feeling, and what aspects of the relationship can be improved. During the discussion today, what we would like to do is share our solution at a high level, the conceptual views that go with it, and discuss how it is augmenting organizational decision making. Perfect. Thanks so much, Jim. I know that Avanade faced a challenge that's really common to a lot of businesses, but you were able to come up with a really unique solution. Uh, Simon, could you tell us a little bit about what the challenge was and the solution that you were able to come up with? Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Lauren. You know, as Jim mentioned, since our clients are at the center of everything we do, there's really two questions that underpin our ability to positively influence those factors. First, what, what actions can we take to deepen our relationship and help our clients realize results? And second, what actions can we take to retain and grow our talent? And in our previous landscape, we had distributed local approaches to answering both of these questions and taking action, which means we really, we had a lot of manual data aggregation, creating many potential sources of truth, leading to many opinions on fundamental questions. So actions were being taken, but we were missing opportunities to consolidate and learn. Specifically, in the client experience space, there were regional manual approaches to collecting and tracking surveys. And then the data coming out of those surveys was manually analyzed and isolated, missing opportunities to connect with our single source of truth, enterprise data stores, and business results. And on the employee experience front, we were seeing isolated and reactive actions driven by local approaches and opinions around understanding experience and retention. So in both cases, we lack the ability to centrally distribute information to drive a common approach, enabling us to learn and improve and use data to answer these challenging human-centric questions. So to this end, our primary goal was to remove the manual time-intensive and error-prone data collection and analysis by bringing data together to create a single source of truth, enabling us to generate deeper common insights on which to take action. And in the client experience space, we established a global and transparent approach to operating and collecting client feedback, giving us the ability to drill into specific client contacts, responses, look at aggregated trends across different business dimensions. And I think as, as many can likely attest to as being the most challenging component to presenting survey data, we aim to facilitate the human analysis of our more quantitative and freeform results. In the employee experience space, we established a proactive approach to 
understanding and taking action on employee engagement by building and surfacing a predictive machine learning model to facilitate human to human stay conversations. As you can imagine, we've got a fair bit going on behind the scenes uh, in order to accomplish this. So before we get into a demo, let me paint a little bit of the technological picture. Logically, moving from source to visualization, our operational data comes out of a solution we built to drive and manage and operate surveys using Power Apps and SharePoint. Survey results come out of a third-party survey tool that we use. And business results and people information comes from our enterprise data stores. All this is then curated, moved around, and engineered with a combination of Azure Blob Storage, Azure Enterprise Data Warehouse down on the Synapse, and Azure Cosmos DB, as well as Azure Data Factory to facilitate the moving data around. And so once that data was featureized, we used the combination of Azure ML Studio and Release Pipelines, as well as Azure Cognitive Services to build models and drive insights, at which point data models and visualizations were created and curated using Power BI and the right insights exposed to the right people using row level security powered by Azure Active Directory. And it, it's pretty obvious that you've used a lot of Microsoft technologies here. And I know it's no secret that Avanade is a Microsoft shop, but can you give maybe some more insights into the choice that you've made here? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and for sure, it's true, we're a Microsoft shop, so we drink the Kool-Aid, but that doesn't mean the Kool-Aid isn't delicious. I genuinely think that this is a better together scenario. The combination of Microsoft capabilities really culminating with Power BI as, as ultimately the goal in our analysis and data conditioning and all this work behind the scenes is to drive human action. And the key to success in driving that human action is the ability to create meaningful and consumable visuals that can drive action. And Power BI is really the linchpin of that for us. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and I, I know that Mahima is, is here to demonstrate exactly what you just referred to. Uh, Mahima, would we be able to dive into that demo now? Um, sure, Lauren, I'll just share my screen. Um, quick disclaimer um, before I start, all the data displayed in the reports that I'll walk through is demo data and doesn't represent uh, Avanade data. So I'll start with our enterprise reporting landing page, which serves as an entry point and a connecting point for all our standardized reporting across business teams. The client reporting lives under the client experience insight and the employee retention report lives under the talent insight. Looking at client reporting first, the start page uh, sets the context of what the user can expect to find in the report. In this case, insights about Avanade's client survey results. Our client survey design includes both score-based quantitative questions as well as free text qualitative questions. And this report covers both. The summary page shows the progress we've made with respect to the client surveyed and the key performance metrics across our clients. As we scroll down, we break those key metrics uh, and we, we see the scores that sit within them. The survey is designed to have two quantitative score-based questions across each journey stage that a client goes through, such that we capture the experience and feedback at each stage of the journey with us. The account management page is essentially like a profile page for an account where we can see all the details for a selected account. We can see the KPIs for the account compared to other aggregated clients. We can see detailed contact level scores, as well as the ability to get to the actual responses per client per survey. The single page essentially provides our account executives a consolidated view of a client. Moving to the text analytics page, this is where lay the biggest challenge of extracting meaningful business insight from unstructured free text data. Essentially getting to the answers of what are we doing well and where there is an opportunity to do things better. The standard out of the box text analytics solutions in the industry didn't work very well for us as they provided us with a long list of frequently used words within our surveys, uh, survey responses, but without any business context behind that word. What we required was a more intelligent model that could provide contextual business themes within our surveys 
not just the word count. Hence, we built our own custom text analytics models model within Power BI using cognitive services in Power BI data flows. And we layered it with complex data transformations within Power BI to build this entire data text analytics model. At a high level, we first extracted the sentiment of each survey response using cognitive services. We then used a blended supervised and unsupervised approach by A, extracting keywords in surveys using cognitive services, B, collating themes relevant to the business, then enriching those themes through a synonym API. We then used Power BI's fuzzy matching algorithm to map the originally extracted key phrases to high-level themes and their associated synonyms. This mapping meant that the individual granular responses could be linked to high-level themes. As we see in the first left visual, this enables business users to focus their attention on topics with strong sentiment, whether positive or negative, with the ability to drill into the keywords and the sentiment of those keywords within those themes. While looking at the top themes and sentiments, we can also look at the sentiment across client revenue on the right, which allows us to focus on our premium clients. By clicking on a client, we can then drill into the themes and the sentiment for that particular client. Moving down, we provide more details in the form of snippets. These snippets are grouped into three buckets based on the likelihood of sentiment. This makes it easy for us to find key phrases for what we're doing well, what, what we can do better. The snippets also provide a quick option to explore the full context and the statement behind any keywords that we identify in the visuals above. As we scroll down, we have then the ability to uh, drill into each detailed server response. Hence, the text analytics solution here provides the ability to explore the most frequent themes in our client surveys and whether there's a strong sentiment associated with them, use tooltips to uncover the next level of detail, showing the actual key phrases associated with that theme, along with the ability to drill into survey snippets and further details if required. This is honestly amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. I feel like your reports are impressive and beautifully done. Um, and I'm especially impressed with the sentiment analysis that you've been able to construct and able to better understand the client experiences. I'd also love to be able to see an example of how you implemented this when it comes to growing talent within Avanad. Um, do you have an example of that as well? Um, yeah, so for the employee experience, we followed a little different approach where the machine learning model was built and run in Azure ML and Power BI was used to explain the model output of the model. So the start page here shows information uh, about the report itself, setting the context of what the user can ex expect to find in the report, which is mainly two things. Identifying how many and which employees are at risk of leaving and then understanding the factors behind that risk. The overview page provides insight into the first question, which is how many of our employees are at a relatively high risk of leaving Avanade and what those numbers look like as compared to historic trends. Based on the risk probability predicted by the ML model, at-risk employees are bucketed as either high or medium risk, and the ability to slice and dice by the risk buckets, as on the right, allows us for formulating scenario-based predictive outlooks. As we scroll down, we can see the breakdown of the risk across different organizational hierarchies, like geographies, departments, and levels. This helps in identifying the pockets of higher risks so that HR could focus their efforts accordingly. The factors page contains visualizations that help explain the factors driving these predictions. This was where the main challenge lay in having to explain the complex reasons behind the model predictions. We wanted to share the workings of the underlying model so that the HR team would be able to understand how and why the model made certain predictions in a relatively simple manner. And hence, HR would be empowered to drive informed decision. Each factor could increase the attrition for some, while the same factor could be reducing the attrition for others. In the first view on the right, we display the factors aggregated by the population as a whole, sorted by factors that have the most impact. We also break down how intensely each factor impacts the population 
positively or negatively. And this view can be further filtered to a subgroup within the population using either the filter pane or the cross-section of employees at risk across different business groups that we have on the left. So now that we know the, what the top factors impacting attrition are, the next step is to understand the patterns behind the impact. For example, identifying if there's a threshold at which a factor increases the risk of an employee leaving. We provide this view by being able to hover over the factors. So we can see the relationship between the risk on the x-axis and the factor value on the y-axis. So in this case, the distance from home as it crosses 10 miles, there is an increase in the risk of an employee leaving. This empowers HR to understand the factors and data patterns to be able to drive their decision making. We also provide a quick guide to users, which explains how they can read and interpret the data patterns that they use, that they see. In addition to sharing the model results, we also share the machine learning model performance metrics with our super users. This provides insight into how well the model is performing. For example, it provides visibility into how many of the employees who left were identified by the mo model prior to them leaving. So in this case, 40% of the employees who left were identified by the model. The quality of the model is further explained through comparison of the employees identified by a model at, at risk and comparing them to the rest of the population. So for example, the employees identified by a model as having high risk are almost seven times more likely to leave as compared to others. We also enable the data scientists to be able to further drill into performance metrics and track the health of the model. They can investigate where the model is not performing very well and improve the model accordingly. Overall, this evidence-based transparent approach helps HR and our leadership teams to identify and take proactive actions to develop talent and increase retention while continuing to maintain the quality and the reliability of our model. That's absolutely perfect. Thank you, Mahima, so much for sharing that demonstration. I, I can tell that a lot of work went into this and you explained everything in the demo really, really well, and it was really easy to understand. So I, I really appreciate you sharing that with us. And um, I know that with any process or implementation, there's a lot of challenges or bumps in the road that can happen and a lot of lessons that you learn. Jem, is there anything that you could maybe add about those lessons that you learned along the way for anyone trying to solve a similar challenge? Yeah, there are some several key takeaways here that I think will be good to share. In our experience for BI initiatives to be transformational and impactful, they must align with key strategic initiatives. I imagine people listening to this session are aware of the growing use of analytics in their organizations and the resource constraints that comes with the increased demand. Um, we have the same challenge in our company and no shortage of ideas. So prioritizing the analytics work closely aligned with our company mission and purpose over others was a key success factor for us in this case. The second takeaway I would mention is thinking about insights in a unified way instead of standalone initiatives, integrating customer and employee experience related data insights and other BI across the business identifies opportunities that otherwise can stay hidden. If you recall from the beginning of our conversation, Business to business relationships take place in the context of ongoing interactions over long periods, and those interactions are driven by employees. So the question becomes, how do you formulate a 360 degree view? And I don't mean a 360 degree view for just the customers, that's essential building block, of course, but also how to see both sides of the coin to establish the connection between clients and employees in an ongoing manner? The answer to that in our case was building a set of interconnected Power BI capabilities based on a single source of the truth with the same consistent analytics experience across each other. This way they act as a holistic 
enterprise intelligence system where users can view client insights as an example, and then seamlessly navigate and translate employee-related data progressively for better decisions and actions. The last key takeaway that I wanted to mention is why we built this all on Microsoft technologies. Azure and Power BI together not only enabled us to put the power of data easily and elegantly in the hands of our decision makers, but they also gave us the flexibility to customize workflows specific to Avanade's business, especially when it comes to handling highly confidential data, having the Azure and Power BI security and privacy features, along with the ability to tailor views in a role-based access model, has been a pivotal part of our content distribution approach. I would like to thank all session attendees. In normal circumstances, this will be an in-person session, so it's less interactive than originally planned. And I hope in the context of this type of format, you still found it useful. Since there is no live Q&A, please feel free to reach out to Mahima, Simon, or I with any comments and questions. Uh, you can also find more details about the solutions we discussed today in the links included on this page. Thank you all so much for being here. Mahima, Simon, and Jem, I want to say I know that this took a lot of work and I just really appreciate all the time that you've put in and all of the insights that you have been able to share with the viewers. So thank you so much.